Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Ram of Ram's Cakes and I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you didn't miss me too much last week, but you know, sometimes you need a break just to get your skills a bit sharper and know exactly what it is that you're doing. So as we're continuing on in our season of things that we love, I wanted to go down a different path this time, something a little bit different. So we're gonna be doing what I call my CLB pie, which is basically chicken, leek and bacon pie. Uh, for those of you that don't like bacon, you can leave it out and put something else in, that's up to you. Uh, it's a bit of a crowd pleaser in our house, so uh, I do make it from time to time. So it's a pie with chicken thighs, some leeks, uh, some mushrooms, uh, cream, garlic, and a whole list, uh, host of other little things just to make it taste good. And then of course, it's gonna have a puff pastry top, all lovely, crispy, and golden. I hope you guys will enjoy this video this week and bake along with me, or even just to watch and enjoy. Uh, but I don't like to do too much talking, as you well know. So let's get to baking, guys. Here are all the ingredients that we're gonna be using, guys. As you know, by now, I always like to give you a bit of a snapshot of everything that we're gonna need for this week's recipe. So of course, it's a chicken pie, so we've got six chicken thighs here. Uh, it makes quite a big pie, but you don't have to eat all of them, especially if you're baking just for yourself. You could probably get away with using a couple of thighs, but if you like chicken, then you know what to do. Uh, and then I've got some leeks. I'm also gonna have a bit of onion in the pie, just to bulk up the filling. Uh, we've got some bacon, we've got 100 grams of bacon there. We've got some butter, some double cream. We've got some eggs, uh, I'll show you what they're for. We've got some mushrooms, and then we've got some puff pastry, which I could lie and say I made it myself, but um, who's got the time, guys? Supermarkets do great versions. There are even vegan versions now, believe it or not. Uh, this one is vegetarian, so yeah, this is puff pastry. We've got some flour. This have got some garlic there. And then our seasonings, um, these are not exhaustive guys, you put what you want in your chicken. Uh, I just kept it simple here for your sake, but I may add some things off camera because you know, that's how we like to eat it in this household. Um, but we've got some fresh thyme there. We've got some dried mixed herbs. That's that little thing there. We've got some salt, we've got some white pepper, paprika smoked, and a little bit of sugar. You always need sugar in your cooking guys. It adds a lovely layer of sweetness um, and it just creates a good balance. Uh, and then for equipment, I've got a casserole dish or pie dish. Uh, it's quite shallow, but you can use whatever you have in your house. Uh, I've got two chopping boards. This one is for the chicken. This one is for my vegetables. Uh, I have a wok frying pan there, a rolling pin to roll out the pastry, wooden spoon and brush and teaspoon. Um, I don't know if I mentioned we've got flour. I probably did, but anyway, uh, <laughs> it's been a while, guys. Um, so yeah, these are all the ingredients and equipment that we're going to be using for this week's bake. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy. Here we go, guys. Okay, guys, so the first step, we need to prep our vegetables. So we've got leeks, which I already cut previously, and an onion. Um, so Always make sure your knife is sharp, guys, so sharpen your knife before you use it. Uh, we'll start with one so that we don't confuse each other. But basically, use the rocking motion, put your fingers away from the blade, so always have your fingers. The blade can brush your knuckles, but your fingers are nowhere near it, so always do that. Put the leek together. Don't watch the noise in the background, guys. The neighbors are enjoying the sun. Um, <laughs> and you can use the rocking motion and you can cut the leeks as thick or as fine as you want them. I like them quite fine. So, and you can just feed the leek towards the knife. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, and just keep the rocking motion going. And it helps if you've got a cloth under your chopping board, guys, so that the chopping board goes nowhere. And there, right there, we have our leeks. Okay, guys, so with the onion, it's pretty much the same kind of process. This time, you wanna get your knife and cut your onion in half. And then take off the little root bits, but not the other bit, because that keeps that bit together. So get rid of that, we don't need that and get rid of that, we don't need that. So now with the onion, there are two ways of doing it. You can literally just slice it going across or you can dice it. 
Um, so I'll show you both. So if you're gonna dice it, create little dents in the onion across, but not all the way to the end, because if you do it to the end, then the onion will fall apart. So literally, and it helps if your knife is sharp at this point, to be able to do that. So you can hold it this way um, to create, keeping the onion together. So as you can see, I've cut the onion. Hopefully you bring it closer. I've cut the onion, but not all the way to the end, okay? And then you get your knife again, and this time you go across, but again, not all the way to the end, and you do it three times. So then it creates crisscrosses going this way, crisscrosses going that way. And then you get your knife, same rocking motion as before, keep your fingers well away, and you will have dice and you can make them as fine or as thick as you want them. I learned this from cooking school, guys, so just wanted to share that little bit of knowledge with you. Okay, so the other way then, of course, is just to slice it as we did with the leek. And again, keep your fingers well out of the way using the rocking motion. And then you're left with the root and then you can pull these apart um, to have like half rings or if you wanted to have onion rings for another dish for example you would only take off the root at one end and slice the whole onion as a whole so yeah that's two ways of cutting the onion i'm going to cut this up small just like this one so that we have uniformity in the bite otherwise you'd end up with big bits of onion in your pie i don't mind but some people don't like that so so cut it up you just again use the rocking motion and cut it all together until you have uniform onions. In any case, the onion is really just there to bulk up the flavor, so you don't really want it big pieces, whereas the leek will be the prominent flavor. avocado oil obviously it's black on camera um, but we use avocado oil in this house we find it's good it's got a good temperature for frying and things so it's about a tablespoon of oil give or take um, and you can also use a little bit of butter as well that helps for the creaminess of the mix so you use like a teaspoon of butter and just let that melt on a medium heat.
garlic frying. And now we're going to add our chicken. I have to get that on quickly, otherwise you'd end up with all the sputtering at the camera. And we don't want that. So with the chicken now, we're not going to... Um, we need this to be midway cooked. We don't want it to be all the way cooked. Otherwise, like I say, it will overcook. So don't move it around too much. Let it form like a bit of a golden brownie crust on the bottom. Meanwhile, we season. So pepper. I've got salt and things on this plate. So we're just going to get to putting in all our seasonings that we'd already allocated plus the thyme. Mix it all together. Of course, that's not enough seasoning. <laughs> so we're gonna add a bit more. What the flour does, the flour thickens up the pie mix. Have you ever seen those pies you get in like the supermarket or our favourite sausage roll place, you know that place? The mix is always creamy on the inside and the trick to that is adding a bit of flour to the mix because the flour thickens up with the liquids in the pan and creates a lovely thick texture. In many ways it's like making your you know your white sauce. In many ways it's like that. So as you can see it's already thickened up and held everything together. You can add little or much, it's up to you. And then at this point we're gonna add some double cream. Again, you eyeball this. I can't tell you how much to put in. You put in as little or as much as you want. I would say that's about three tablespoons. Give or take. So, when you put cream in, definitely turn the temperature all the way down because the heat will make the cream split and we don't want that. So now, this is our pie mix. And can you believe it, in all that I forgot to add the bacon, ha ha ha. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. So I'm gonna fry up the bacon real quick and add it to the mix. The next time you see this mixture, it will have the bacon in it. Forgive me, guys. I completely forgot. This mixture now is gonna cook for about eight minutes on a very low temperature. Meanwhile, I will fry the bacon, add it to the mix, and then I'll show you the penultimate step before it goes in the oven. Okay, see you in a bit, guys. Okay, so we are back. The pie mixture has cooked for approximately five to eight minutes. I fried up my bacon in that time. I'm gonna add it to that. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is your pie mixture. Tastes delicious on its own, but it's even better with a pastry pie top. So let's go and roll out our pastry and get this lovely thing in the oven. So I've separated the pie mixture into two casserole dishes. Um, I decided um, that it will make the pie go a little bit further, but you can do one big pie if you want to, but I figured 
it would be nicer in, and um, it would look better in two separate pie dishes uh, and also then it means it goes on for a couple of days so now we're going to mix the we're going to put our pie lids on top of these um, and then uh, put these in the oven so I'll show you what I do with the puff pastry okay so we've got our puff pastry out of the fridge use it straight from the fridge guys don't use it any other way because it will melt because of the butter in the layers so get your puff pastry seeing as we're doing two pies cut it in half the other one can go back in the fridge while we roll this one out and as you can see i'm rolling it onto greaseproof paper you can do it straight onto the bench if you want on the surfaces but personally i like not having to do too much cleaning Who's with me uh, so a bit of flour to ensure it doesn't stick grab your other piece of paper or foil or cling film whatever you have in your house get your rolling pin hopefully you can see what i'm doing and basically keep the square in shape because the dish i'm using is square but if it was a round dish then of course make it and basically what you want to do is roll it out excuse me until it's big enough to fit onto your dish common sense right i don't think so so you just have to keep rolling it you want it to be the thickness of a pound give or take now the purists among us will say don't keep turning it around Today I'm an amateur, all right. <laughs> okay, so get your pie to see if it's big enough. Of course, it's big enough here, but not there's gaps. So keep rolling it until you're happy with the size. So when we come back, as if by magic, you'll see my pies with their lids on. Okay, our pies have got their lids on and me being extra, have got little flowers on them. Don't watch all the flour on my hands. So now we're gonna egg wash. So that's what those eggs were for. So we've got a whole egg and an egg yolk and a little bit of salt in with our pastry brush. And we're basically just gonna brush this mixture of eggs onto the pie and what this does is it creates a beautiful golden brownie color don't be shy with it put loads of it on even on the little flowery bits you won't taste it it just goes into the pastry and makes the pie really really golden and brown so don't be shy with the mixture all over the pie and on the edges as well. You ever like those crusty bits on the pie? That's because we've got gorgeous golden egg wash on them. So again, same with the second pie. If you don't have a brush, by the way, guys, that's okay. You can use a spoon. It will be slightly trickier, but the idea is the same. They took about 40 minutes, I would say, give or take. Um, and yeah, they're lovely and golden brown. As you can see, the gaps where it's a little bit white is because the egg wash didn't get there. So you can see how important it is to get the egg wash all over the pie so that you don't end up with patchy bits like that. It is a rustic pie, bear in mind. This is not like a professional pie that you're, you know, making for whatever, but this is just family, homegrown cooking nice and yummy because to be honest it's about the taste when it comes to chicken pie. I could have made it all fancy and all the rest of it but to be honest I really just wanted you to see the basic how it works so I put it on a towel because I don't want to burn my bench uh, but you can put it on a baking rack or whatever the case might be um, just to let it cool down before you serve it give it some time to wait you can have it hot but to be honest 
you want it when it's just getting a little bit cool and the pastry is nice and soft and crispy and all the oxymorons you can think of <laughs> so yeah guys this is the final finished product i will show a picture of it um, so that you can see it on the inside and everything um, but yeah this is the finished product and i hope you've enjoyed baking along with me this week um, just wanted you to have something a little bit different from the norm um, so if you've got any more ideas of other savory bakes that you want me to do or other savory dishes in, ge in general then let me know you can always dm me at rums cakes on my instagram which is r-u-m-s underscore cakes or you can email me rumscakes at gmail.com i've been getting some really nice uh, requests of things uh, for people to have um, as cakes for orders so you can also do that if that's what you want to do um, but yeah as always guys it's always a pleasure to be able to create something for you guys just to watch or even bake along with so until the next time guys take care of yourself.